Hey guys, round three of the next great Yugi Tuber is up, and I will link my entry in the description below. It's a fun dual video involving a modern version of Morphtronics. Now, if everybody who watches this video clicks on that link, hits the thumbs up button, and then even just comes right back to this video, then it will guarantee that I make it to the semi-finals. And you guys, so far, my subscribers, have put me at the top of the charts in all both of the rounds so far, so I expect you guys can do it again because I owe this all to you. Thank you. You the real MVPs. What is up my Yu-Gi-Oh bros? I'm Heroes, the one the only the RJB Zero. Welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! in Business Casual. So in my last Casual Friday video, I said that the best competitive deck for chain beat players to play this format is Hat because it runs on similar mechanics with a very similar playstyle, however it can produce much more progressive advantage than Chain Beat does and relies a little less on reactive plays than Chain Beat does. So it's a great deck for us control players to run, however, now that I've said that, uh, I haven't given you very long to play the deck because now I'm going to tell you why you probably shouldn't play it in the near future. The, the reason is because, well, Chattels. Chattels are basically the reason why we will not be able to play Hat competitively in the near future. Now, the reason why I say this is because Shadows gain advantage based on their creatures going to the graveyard, um, whether it's by being attacked, in which case they get their flip effect, or whether it is being destroyed by a card effect, or just being sent to the graveyard by a card effect, do you see why this would be an issue for Hat? The reason why Hat can gain so much advantage over most decks this format is because it can basically destroy anything, um, anything by card effect at the drop of a, at the drop of a hat, I guess. Uh, <laughs> for instance, you can use Theosophy to summon Moral Talk during their turn and disrupt a play, or you can use a hand to destroy their cards. Uh, or you can use a, some form of trap hole. Now, bottomless does still work on that deck. However, most of the targets that are going to be bo bottomless worthy are going to be fusions, and the main go-to fusion monster for the Shadow deck is Midrash. And that's a problem because bottomless trap hole doesn't work on Midrash. Now, don't get me wrong; the trap tricks engine itself is still actually going to be really good going into the Shadow format. Um, I, I can't say necessarily whether it's going to be a Shadow format per se, but into a format with Shadows because of its ability to search out Deep Dark Trap Hole and other various outs for the deck. However, the hands and artifacts part are kind of the problem because uh, they can't gain advantage over Shadows. Shadows will just recover from anything that they do, destroying them by card effects or even running them over when they're face down. So Hat is not going to be able to gain advantage against Shadows, so it's almost always going to lose game one against Shadows. It always will. Um, you can go into the side deck, but keep in mind that Shadows have just as many side deck cards against uh, against Hat as Hat has against Shadows. Whereas Hat can use, of course, uh, Shadow Imprisoning Mirror and stuff like that. Shadows also can use things like Debunk and stuff like that. So Shadows have just as many side deck outs to Hat as Hat has to Shadows. So that's going to be a major issue for the deck. Now a lot of people have been saying that's probably going to be okay because Shadows might not even be that great in the TCG. Now many of you guys have heard my rule. Uh, my rule about the graveyard. And that rule about the graveyard says basically that Shadows are inevitably going to be a meta threat. Because I have this rule which says that any deck... Any archetype which centers around effects which activate in the graveyard is going to have its time to shine. Every time one of those archetypes come out, it, it's, it's always a thing. Unless, of course, it involves battle searching, like Gusto's. But other than that, whenever a deck centers around card effects that activate in the graveyard, it becomes a meta deck at some point or another. Which means that Shadows, in, in that they are gaining the vast majority of their support coming into Duelist Alliance are almost inevitably going to be a thing in the coming format. So I think that we can say goodbye to Hat as a deck. However, other iterations of part particularly the Trap Tricks engine will probably still see play because Trap Tricks are freaking amazing and that's a point for my next discussion video in which I'll be discussing specifically why Trap Tricks may be the best splashable engine of all time. Meanwhile, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, let me know why in the comment section below. And of course, subscribe for more decks, discussion, analysis, and general Yu-Gi-Oh! shenanigans. Of course, let me know what you think. Is Hat going to be dead as soon as Shadows come out? Or do we have a little while to wait before the demise of my favorite Chain Beat substitute uh, comes about? 
So thank you guys for watching. I'm your host, the RJB0, and I got a jet. See ya. That was a really awkward wink. <laughs>